Can you provide, Mr. Long, a detailed example of a time in your life where resiliency led to success? I know that could nobody else could have saved me or took care of me but God. Uh, I was taking something they call Sikonol, uh, the medical name for them, but I think the street name, they were called Red Devils. And they were like downers, so I was taking those. So I took some of those one night and I passed out right on the radio. I was on the radio, I passed out. Some guy, one of the DJs came to the radio station, got me out of the chair and continued the show. Well, so I got in my car and I drove and I left that radio station and I remember stopping at a red light. And I rem last thing I remember, and I remember this to the day, and this was in 1968. I, I, the light changed to green. And when that light changed to green, I remember driving off. And when I came to again, I had hit a utility pole. And if I'd have, if anybody had been in the car with me, I would have killed them because the pole came straight through the windshield on the passenger side. They had to get a settling torch, cut the top out of the car in order to get me out there, to pull me out of the roof, out of the top of the car. Went to back to Birmingham, started, uh, well, I lost my job on the radio station because of the drug use. So I go back to Birmingham, go back to my home. I try to get another job, but I don't get a job. So I end up with the wrong people and I become a heroin addict. Well, after a while with heroin, you know, I got to a point where I was tired of being tired. So I went to God. So I went to, oh, I know what I did. I went to jail. I got put in jail. And you know, every time you go to jail, you know, you start praying to God. Oh, Lord, if you just let me get out, I'll be good. I won't do this no more. Well, God did let me out. I got out. I stayed in jail about three days. I got right out. God did, did just what I asked him. So I went right out. I went out like five days. I was right back in jail. But what I came to realize is when I went back to jail, it didn't bother me. Because I said to myself, you lied to God. And if you lie to God, God will punish you. So I was ready to be punished. I didn't worry about it no more. I said, whatever I want, whatever they give me, five, ten, I don't care. I'll take it because I did it to myself. To so somewhere like a halfway house or something. And I stayed there about two weeks and I got out of there. And I never used another drop of heroin in my life. I stopped using heroin on my own. Because I realized this. Heroin is just just like an just say this. Say if this is cocaine, if I don't put it in my nose, it don't get there. So it's nobody but me. It's just that simple. So I don't want to commit suicide. I don't want to kill myself. So I finally realized, you know, what my life means to me, and you know, and that's how I got into wrestling, and I became a success there. Thank God, because I I changed, and God helped me change, and He took care of me. So that's that's my story. Uh, Mr. David Tank Abbott, my friend, I will direct the same question to you, good sir. Take as much time as you like. Can you provide a detailed example of a time in your life where resiliency led to success? I, I guess you could say I, I lived dog years because um, I crammed a lot of fun in those times. Where are we partying and what are we going to do? And uh, boy, man, I had some really crazy fun times found the UFC, or should the UFC find me? It didn't exist. There was no such thing as a sport. These people didn't train. They didn't, there was none of this what it is today. It was just real fighting. And I went on and made a name for myself in street fighting and UFC. And I was living a dream life. And you know, you're in a, uh, waiting room, office type thing, or a room. Next thing I know, a gurney comes rolling in and says, uh, you're not going home. And I go, uh, what? Like my, had a visceral feeling like my heart dropping through my, my body. And I'm like, what are you talking about? And they're going, your kidneys don't work anymore. Mm. You're in the final stage of, uh, of, uh, of uh, liver failure and um, that was part of it and uh, they took me into the operating room and through correspondence with my wife I ended up finding out that I died five times on the operating table mm. and I had six strokes 
and I don't remember anything, but my wife told me about it. And they, I was in the ICU for like 107 days and they had me there and I wasn't responding for longest time. And they were talking about pulling the plug on me and the doctor said that they were gonna go away for the weekend and tell my wife to figure out, she was power of attorney, what she wanted to do. You just gotta keep moving. And I have a saying, left foot in front of the right, stop, I raise an eyebrow, and take a deep breath and go, okay, whatever, just keep on moving. And that's my biggest fight I've ever had. And trust me, the physical, pain and everything that I've gone through, I had a chance, I had a complication of, a, of a, my liver. I had a roundworm infection, parasite infection that took hold two years after the transplant from taking anti-rejection medicine and once again, I lived a charmed life. But to, to take away from everything is value. Every every second you have, a uh, guy from the used to run the UFC came in, and they were holding my hands. And I must have heard the doctor talking to her or something, because I came alive. And my friend said it was like awakening. It started happening again. I swam to get back through it again. And this time when I popped through, I knew nothing was gonna happen and I felt calm. And that I came to find out is when I was probably dying on the table. Mm -hmm. I had my liver transplant and died five times and six strokes. And the biggest fight was that fight. And I believe I've won it. And that's just awesome. Mr. Abbott, is it beneficial for you to make your beliefs a part of your identity? The floor is yours whenever you're ready to go, good sir. Your beliefs are who you are, but that's all dependent on time, place, and everything else. And not so much like your principles, you know? Your principles are something that who you are through your whole life. You could be the biggest uh, name in the world of sports, basketball, football, wrestling. You could also be the biggest jerk and narcissistic prick in the world. But right. people will still love you as long as you're a winner because our society values success over character. Absolutely. And that's a crying Guys. shame. The same question for Mr. Teddy Long. Is it beneficial for you, my friend, to make your beliefs a part of your identity? We talk about my identity. You know, I don't want people to recognize me as Teddy Long, the former general manager of SmackDown or WWE Hall of Famer Teddy Long. All that, that's good. And I thank God for that and I'm glad I was able to accomplish all of that. But what I want people to look at me is what I have had the opportunity to say here tonight on this program about my past, how I overcame heroin and how I overcame all these obstacles that were in my way. And I want people to look at me and say, well, hey, you know, Teddy Long said something there tonight. And I thought about that and I think I'm going to change my life. I think I'm going to stop doing this. Or I'm going to stop. I'm going to be a better person. It's what you show is what allows us to grow. And uh, you do that all the time.